with Quilters Hideaway, a quilt shop up in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Welcome to our channel. If you're new around here, make sure you click the subscribe button and turn the bell on for notifications whenever we upload our next video. Today, we're gonna go over binding. It's actually the first video in a three-part series, so stick around. There's lots of information to absorb, learn, and maybe even try out a few tricks or ticks. All right, in the binding world, there's two main ways to do binding, straight up grain strips or bias cut strips, which are cut, on, which are cut on the 45 degree angle, have a little more give or stretch in them and are great for rounded corners or edges like scallops or waves or anything like that. All right, the straight of grain strip is definitely the easier of the two, but I'm gonna show you ways to make bias a little more friendly and hopefully something that you feel like you can tackle and accomplish. Here we go. Are you ready? I'm ready. So straight of grain is pretty simple, but the question that we get asked all the time and what this video is mainly going to be about is how to calculate how much binding you need. You've finished your spectacular quilt. You're ready to go. You had it quilted or you've quilted it yourself, but how do you finish it? Don't put it in the pile to bind later or never in my case. Definitely hang on to it. Let's get it finished so you can use it. One of my little like secret tips is sometimes I just search the edges of my quilts and think I'll put binding on it later, but that never happens. So let's get started. Calculating your binding really isn't that hard. The first step for whatever method you wanna do is to measure the outside perimeter or the edges where the binding's going to go. If your quilt has straight edges, that's really simple. Measure the sides, measure the top, measure the bottom, and you're set. So if your quilt is like this, which has straight edges all the way around, this is a small quilt. It's one that's been hanging in the shop for a couple years, but it's never been bound. We just fold it just right so you don't know. So here's what the quilt looks like. So it's actually a square quilt, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it in half and measure this length right here. All right, so you can do that in one of many ways. A foldable or a flexible ruler, a cutting ruler, or even just the edges of your cutting mat work great. So I'm gonna lay it down on here. So remember it's folded in half. I'm getting 18 inches. 18 times two is 36. And then I measure the other way. Again, I can fold it in half, or since it's pretty small, I can leave it as just one, 36. So this quilt is 36 inches long, 36 inches across. So the length and the height are the same. But no matter what your quilt is, if it's 60 by 70, that's fine too. You're gonna add up those four numbers. So for my little quilt here, 36 plus 36 plus 36 plus 36 is 144. All right, go ahead and add about 10 inches to that number. It gives yourself a little buffer for your corners and to attach your binding once you sew it all the way around the edge, you get those two tails. We're gonna go over how to fix that in the future, but give yourself about 10 extra inches so you know you've got enough for that. So plus 10, I get 154 inches. That means I need 154 inches of binding to go all the way around my quilt. But can I go up to the cutting table at my favorite quilt shop and say, hey, I need 154 inches of binding cut off this bolt they might look at you kind of funny. So what do you tell them? How much fabric do you tell them that you need? Well, here's the deal. You're gonna take 154 inches and divide it by the width of fabric of the binding strip you are about to cut. So if it's off a 45 inch bolt, my recommendation is to divide it by 40. Give yourself a little wiggle room, kind of subtracts out the salvage and any wonkiness that you've got. Or if you have 108 inch binding, or fabric that you want to cut for binding. Maybe you're using some of the backing fabric as binding. You would divide by 108 inches or maybe 100 inches. Give yourself a little wiggle room again. So if I find my bolt of fabric and it's a 45 inch bolt or 42 to 45 inch bolt, I'm going to go ahead and take 154 divided by 40. So divide by 40. That gives me 3.85. Can I go up to the cutting table now and say I need 3.85 strips of binding? No, they'll look at you like a crazy person. 
So 3.85 tells me how many strips of binding I need. I really need to have a whole number there. So we're gonna round up to four strips. Again, if you are at like 3.98, go ahead and add another strip in there. Round up to five. I just really like to have wiggle room. I don't wanna run out, especially on a big quilt. I'd rather have enough fabric. So for this quilt, 3.85, I'm gonna bump it up to four. So I need four strips of fabric to go all the way around my quilt. Now here's the biggie that you've gotta answer. What, what strip size do you like to bind with? The average is probably two and a half, but do you like your binding a little more narrow, two and a quarter? Or do you like it a little bigger, maybe three inches? That's the number that you've got to multiply your strip number by. So I have four strips of fabric. I'm gonna multiply that by two and a half. That gives me 10 inches. Now I could go up to the cutting table and say, hi, I need 10 inches of this fabric. They probably say, oh, a third of a yard is the closest cut. Great, you need a third of a yard. You'll just need to get the closest number above the size that you need. So I need 10 inches of fabric. I'm gonna get a third of a yard, which is actually 12 inches. So I'll have a couple inches left over. Okay, so here we are at the cutting table. I have my third of a yard fabric. I have a ruler and I have a rotary cutter. I'm ready to go. So I said earlier that I really like to have two and a half inch with the fabric strips for my binding. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those. Now when I cut, know that everybody cuts differently. I am right-handed to start with, but how I learned or how you learned might be different, but we get the same result at the end. So I'm gonna show you how I like to cut. Maybe take a couple tips from that and then apply them to how you like to cut and everybody will be happy at the end. All right, I ignore any square or numbers on my, my mat. They're not always printed as accurate as a cutting ruler are, so I just focus on my ruler and ignore everything below my fabric on the mat. I'm gonna start with my fabric, the fold facing me. I've pressed out any big wrinkles that I need to, and I'm going to make this side of my fabric a straight edge. When it's cut off the bolt in a shop, it's not always cut exactly straight, and that's okay. Some shops give you a little bit extra, um, or if you wash your fabric first, it might have gotten funky in the wash, but whatever you have, we want to get a straight edge before we start cutting our strips. So I'm gonna find a solid line on my ruler, all right? Any solid line works. I'm not really worrying about the numbers on the ruler at all. I just want a solid line. I'm gonna line that up with the fold of my fabric. So straight across on the fold. The other thing I'm paying attention to is that a little bit of fabric sticks out all the way up and down the left side of my ruler. So here's where it's really nice if you have a cutting table that you can walk all the way around. I'm gonna walk to the other side of my cutting table and go ahead and make this cut straight down the ruler. You'll also notice that I only cut the width of my hand. So I cut the width of my hand, I pause, I pick my hand up, I set it back down and I finish that cut. That's to make sure that I get a straight cut. So I'm gonna lay my ruler down right along here. I'm making sure there's still a black solid line on the bottom or at my fold lined up perfectly. I'm gonna count my squares one full square, a second full square, and a half a square. This ruler has a white dashed line at my half mark. I'm gonna make sure all the way up that that two and a half inch mark is perfectly lined up. And now I'm gonna cut my strip. There's one, all the way up. So here's a strip. All right, I'm gonna finish cutting them. Okay, and my last strip, Remember, I line up the solid line on the fold, and then all the way up, I line up that half inch mark. I cut the length of my hand each time so I know I'm holding that ruler secure. And that is all the strips I need for my binding. So those strips are cut. All right, so now my binding strips are cut. That was the hardest part.
how to sew them together is next. And then we're gonna do bias binding together. Let's do this. Okay, once all four of my strips of binding are cut, I need to sew them together in order to create that 154 inch long single piece of binding. How do I do that? Well, my favorite method to do that is to lay one strip up and down on my cutting table. I still have my salvages attached and that's completely okay. I'm gonna grab another strip of binding, open it up and lay it to create a plus or a crisscross, making sure that my salvages are sticking out on the top and on this side. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm either going to draw a line or at least just put a couple pins so I can get to the machine. I'm going to sew separating the long pieces of fabric from the short pieces of fabric. So if I put a pin here, I need to sew the line right down here. These are my short pieces, these are my long pieces, and I wanna sew that line to divide that the two. If you need, you can always grab your ruler and draw a line from the inside corner at the top to the inside corner at the bottom, like so. So when I start sewing, I wanna start sewing right here at this inside 90 degree, and I'm aiming for this bottom inside 90 degree. I'm gonna to head to the machine and give that a sew. All right, so now I've sewn along this line. I need to trim off my extra fabric. You can either grab a pair of scissors and give it a trim or your rotary cutter. So I'm just gonna lay my ruler right over that binding, trim it off a quarter of an inch beyond my seam, and then when I go to the iron, this is one time where I am going to press that seam open. So I eliminate as much bulk as I can in my binding. So I'm gonna press that seam open. All right, I press that seam open just like so. I'm gonna continue doing that same method. So I lay one strip face up. I grab my next strip face down, right sides together, making sure my salvages are sticking out past the strips, I'm gonna draw my line or sew my seam, separating the two long strips from the two short strips. And then I can open it up, check that I made a longer strip, cut off my extra and press my seams open. Once I have my seams pressed open and this really long piece of binding, I'm ready for the next step. The next step in straight of grain binding is to fold wrong sides together just like so and press so you have one one really long piece that looks just like this then it's ready to sew on to the quilt so we just went over how to cut and prepare binding if all four sides are the same remember measure the perimeter of the quilt side side, side top bottom add all four of those numbers together that gives you the length of binding that you need. Add about 10 inches as a buffer. Then divide it by the width of fabric of the binding piece that you're using. 40, 108, however long your binding strips are. Take that number and round it up to the nearest whole number. Then multiply by the width of strip you like. Two and a half, two and a quarter, three inches. That gives you the amount of fabric you need to make your binding. Ask for that amount of fabric or dig in your stash and find that amount of fabric. Cut your strips, sew them back together, press them, and you're ready to attach it to your quilt. But what if you have round corners or edges, scallops or waves? We haven't done that yet. How are you gonna do your binding? Well, you could use straight of grain binding to do that. How? This is the fun trick that I like. If you use straight of grain binding on something that has a scallop like this, when you sew it on the quilt, you're gonna get really close to that point of the scallop, and then you're just gonna pull it straight, just like this. Keep sewing, and it'll snap back and give you enough binding to roll around the edge. That's one way to do it. But what if you wanna go ahead and do bias binding where it gives you a little bit of a stretch as you bind? 
let's go over how to calculate how much fabric you need to do bias binding and some additional tricks to do that. The quilt behind me has two scalloped edges. Are you ready for a free quilt pattern? If you have a handful of two and a half inch strips remaining with the fabric, so if you had a jelly roll that you didn't use all of, or if you have a small jelly roll that you wanna use, sew all of those strips together. In this case, I used 18 strips. Then grab half a yard of fabric, cut it in half, so nine inches, sew a strip on either side of your quilt. Quilt it and then cut your scallops. That's what I've done here. So I've scalloped each end of my fabric and I need to bind it. If we're being honest, it's already bound, but let's use it for the example. Here's where that flexible measuring tape comes in handy because you can take this measuring tape and lay it in each of those scallops to get the exact amount of fabric that you need. You can always ballpark how much fabric you need, but this way you would know by kind of going along your scallops, how much fabric each scallop will take up because it's gonna use a little bit more fabric than if it were just straight across. So I measure along here. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. I'm gonna add a little bit of fabric in there, add a little bit of inches in there as a buffer, but I just mosey on down. So about 45 inches. If I were to measure this straight, it came to 37 inches. So I added almost 10 inches by having the scallops than if I didn't and it was straight across. So 45 inches on one side and my length is 54. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna add 54 plus 54 plus 45 plus 45. I get 198. Again, just like before, I would add about 10 inches to that number to give you a little wiggle room. So 208 is my new number. This time, I'm gonna multiply that by the width of strip I want to have, to have my binding be. I'm still gonna use two and a half inches. So 208 times 2.5. That number gives me 520. Here's the funny step. I need you to take the square root of that big, that big number. So the square root of 520 in my case is 22.8. I'm gonna round up to 23, and then I'm gonna add a couple inches, say 25. That's the size of square I need to cut binding for this quilt. So I would go to the shop and I would ask for probably three quarters of a yard of fabric. I would cut a 25 inch square and I would count cut my fabric just like we're about to show you. Now, for this example, I just grabbed a fat quarter from downstairs. A fat quarter works great to bind something that's approximately 30 inches by 30 inches or smaller. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my fat quarter and open it up wide. And now I'm ready to make it a square. So I'm gonna take, a, take one corner of it and fold up, all right? I did make sure that both sides were straight whenever I started this. So if I fold up and match this edge, this is gonna give me my square. Other option is if you have a big square ruler, you could go ahead and just lay that on your fabric and cut and then you know that you have, cut all the way around it and then you know you have a square. But for this case, this will work just fine. So I've laid my ruler on and I'm gonna cut at the top this extra piece. So now I have it folded up once. I'm gonna fold it up over one more time and try to line this up as best I can. So I've lined up my creases or my folds. This side has one fold. When I look at it, it's just one fold. This side has the two folds. The two folds I want to be kind of in that bottom left corner because that's what I'm gonna start cutting along. All right, just like this. Now, if you wanna check yourself, you can always use that 45 degree line um, on your ruler if you have like a V on the ruler. So right in here, I have this V. I can lay that on the tippy corner and make sure that I have a true 45 or 90 degree line right here and that I folded it correctly. That's always one way to check it. Um, you can decide whether you wanna check it each time or 
not. So the first strip that we're gonna cut is going to be half of our real width. So if I take 2.5 divided by two, I get an inch and a quarter. So I've lined up one big square and a quarter of an inch along that double fold side, and I'm making sure that at the top I have a flat line on the single fold line. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this strip. Now that's the only one we have to cut kind of weird. Everything else is the width of fabric that you need. So two and a half inches, and I just cut along here like so all the way up. Now there are methods that can do this where um, you can have a continuous cut. I just like this method because I don't have to think about it very much. So it gives me all of these pieces and they're all ready to sew back together. If you notice, they have that angled seam on each side, except for this first one. So I'm gonna open it up and then fold it flat again and cut a 45 degree line on this corner. So I just find a 45 degree line on my ruler and it's white in this case. I line it up at the bottom of my strip and I'm gonna go ahead and cut. So now all of these strips are ready to go. I'm going to alternate a long strip and a short strip. So my seams are kind of every so often and they're not consecutively the same distance or I don't get to the very end and have a ton of seams piled together. So if I take this long strip and I take this short strip, I lay them out how I want them to end up and then I fold them together. Now, when I lay them right sides together, just like I've done, I need this triangle and this triangle to stick out past each other about a quarter of an inch. So when I sew my seam, they'll end up straight. Again, I can lay my ruler down just like I did with the, the straight of grain binding, draw my line, and then go sew, or just know that I need a quarter of an inch seam right here. All right, so I've sewn my seam, I've opened it up, and it's pressing, laying flat, I would press this seam open, just like on the regular binding or the straight of grain binding, press that seam open, and then I'm ready to go. I would sew all of my pieces together. Once all of the pieces are together, I would do wrong sides together and press. So I have one really long piece of fabric folded in half, just like so. All right. Now this is ready to go. And you'll notice I can bend it a lot more than I could bend my straight of grain binding. All right, we've gone over how to cut and prepare our binding for both straight of grain and bias. So whether it's straight or a little curvy, you know how to calculate your binding and how to sew it on your quilt. As a recap, straight of grain binding, measure the perimeter side side, top bottom. Add about 10 inches. This gives you how much fabric you need to go all the way around your quilt. Divide that by the width of fabric for your binding or 40 inches for the most part. Then round up to the nearest number. That's how many strips of binding you need. Multiply that by the width of binding you like. Average two and a half. That is the yardage you need or the inches you need of fabric in order to make your binding. So 10 inches, maybe is a third of a yard, so on and so forth. Bias binding on the other hand, use, use that foldable measuring tape, measure the perimeter of your quilt, making sure to account for all scallops, waves, or rounded corners. Add about 10 inches again. Multiply that number by the width of strip you're going to use. Again, two and a half in my case. Take that big number and find the square root of it. After you find the square root, round up and add a couple of, an, of inches. That is the size square you need in order to fold and cut the bias binding correctly. You can use that square number and find how much binding you need by using a rectangle. It's a little trickier. Basically, if you find that you need an 18 by 18 inch square fabric, if you take 18 times 18, together you would get 324. Divide that by your fabric width, or maybe 42, that gives 7.71. 
Round up, you get eight inches. So you would need an eight inch by 42 inch rectangle in order to use a rectangle of fabric to make bias binding. Just remember you'd have a lot more seams than if you use a square fabric. Now you know how to calculate and prepare bias and straight of grain binding. As I told you earlier when we started this video, this is the first part of a three-part series. So stay tuned, make sure you hit that bell to subscribe and receive notifications or hit the thumbs up if you learned something new. I'll see you next time for how to sew that binding on and how to close it. We'll sneak in a few tips too. The last part of this series is all about specialty binding, adding a flange, using Minky, sewing all of the binding with the machine, and maybe even some decorative stitches. We'll see how far we get. Until then, have a great day, and we will see you at the machine next time.